Man, it's so good to see all of y'all this morning. I'm excited that you guys are here, just excited about what God is doing. A quick note that I want to um, share, as some of you may notice and feel, um, we are getting more and more full. And so what I want to encourage, that's a good thing. Thank you for that. Yep. That's a great thing. What I want to encourage you to do is make room for one more. Um, I like you. I, I, nobody likes sitting in the middle unless you're at the movies. But if we can continue to move in and help it um, be easy for those who are coming in to find a spot um, to sit, that would be such a great help for us um, to make room for one more. Okay? A couple of quick things before we get started. Just a re- reiteration. Parents, I, I promise I'm not going to hold you for longer than five or six minutes. And... Um, If you'll just meet me right here, I want to share some quick news with you. We'll keep your kids happy and um, wonderful at that. And then next week, whatever you do, don't miss church next week. We have Young Communicators Sunday. Three of our uh, great young communicators are sharing next week. Uh, Danny, Kiwan, and Liz, and it's going to be an incredible time. So you don't want to miss it. I've heard the message once already, and it's good, y'all. So make sure you're here. So um, we are finishing and concluding our shift series. How many of y'all have been enjoying this perspective shift, changing the way we see things? Um, And we're concluding um, changing the way we see obstacles in our life, okay? Uh, So if you have your Bible, stand with me, and we're going to Luke chapter 18, starting at the 35th verse. Luke chapter 18, starting... At verse 35, and it says, as he drew near to Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging and hearing a crowd going by. He inquired what this meant. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. And he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And those who were in front rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he came near, he asked them, What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, Recover your sight. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise to God. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for our opportunity to share your word. I pray that you would give us ears to hear and hearts to receive what you would say in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Um. Y'all, I'm running on two and a half hours of sleep right now. Um, I went to bed at a little after 10, and I woke up at um, one something, and we are rocking and rolling. We have transitioned from a household of two to a household of three, and um, everybody who is outnumbered, parents, I'm praying for you because I now understand your burden. It has been a challenge, but what has been amplified in this challenge, it is not the newborn, it is the middle child. Now, I don't believe in stereotypes and all of that, but y'all, I got a prototypical middle child. Maverick wants to do whatever Maverick wants to do, and he is stretching the limits and boundaries. He will climb up on chairs and dance. He's climbing over and jumping on tables, and I I think I have used the ice pack more this last week than all of the last six months. But what he has been doing recently, y'all, that is really just getting to us is he has figured figured out how to climb out of his crib, and he is climbing out of his crib almost every night. So the first time he did it, he's not even uh, two years old yet. The first time he did it, we said, okay, good. We're going to lower the bed. He won't be able to do that. Nope, that didn't work. He was able to use his feet to climb up, and we said, okay, we're going to take your feet away by putting you in a sleep sack. He figured out how to get his feet to work right in the sleep sack. And then I said, okay, fine. We got you this time. We're going to put the sleep sack on backwards. And now you don't know what to do. Well, he laid down and was able to bend and unzip his sleeper. 
and then just smiling at me after he did it. You see, Maverick didn't see any of these obstacles as limitations in his life. Are y'all laughing at me? But hear me. God wants to change your perspective about the way you see your obstacles. So many of us see our obstacles as limitations. We see our obstacles as barriers that cannot be crossed. And today, God wants to shift your perspective on the way you see your obstacles. Because, friends, your perspective shapes your future. The way you see a thing shapes the next steps you take in every aspect of your life. The way you imagine, Scripture says it like this, as a person thinks, so are they. Scripture confirms that science has confirmed that our thought life affects our real life. Your perspective shapes your future. Friends, the key about perspective is you cannot control what happens to you, but you can control your perspective on what happens can't control where you were born, who your mama and daddy is. You can't control some of the cards that have been dealt to you in your life, but you can control your perspective. And today, what God wants you to do is God wants you to see your obstacles through his perspective. God wants you to put on his glasses or put on some glasses that help you see your obstacles through his perspective. Big idea, God sees every obstacle in your life as an opportunity. Every obstacle, every barrier, every limitation that you feel like you have is an opportunity from God. Our biblical passage today is, is really framing multiple perspectives. You get the perspective of a blind man. You get the perspective of a crowd, the way they see a blind man. You get the perspective of how the crowd sees Jesus. You get the perspective of how the blind man sees Jesus and how Jesus sees all of them. And all of these perspectives shapes the way they move forward in the story. And through this story, I believe that God wants us to see the opportunity in obstacles in our world and in our life. And there are four opportunities that we get each and every day and each and every obstacle that we face. Here's the first thing. You have an opportunity to do what you can do. <clears throat> Friends, I, I need you to understand that your obstacle does not absolve you from your human responsibility. Yes, God is all powerful and all strong, but he invites you to participate in what he is trying to do in your world. Let me put it practically like this. You can't be praying for a job and never put in an application. <laughs> that you've got to do what you can do. And, and I'm, a, I'm aware, we all have limitations in our lives. I prayed since I was three or four years old that God would make me six five and I'm six foot tall. Maybe my heavenly body, he will answer that prayer. I'm not sure. But we all have limitations. We all have things that limit us in our world, but we should not let our limitations stop us from doing what we can do. Here, here's the point. Our limitations should never present prevent us from pursuing opportunities. Look at the man in the text. In this day, there was no ADA. There was no compliance. This was a blind man who didn't have any help, but he did what he was able to do. He asked somebody to help him put him at the city gate. He was asking for alms for his daily bread to be able to take care of what he needed. And when he heard the commotion, he investigated what was going on. How many times do we let obstacles stop us from doing the next right thing in our life? And here's what we like to do. Because we think we can't do all of it, we don't do any of it. And friends, I want to challenge you to do what you can do. 
Don't allow your thoughts and information and knowledge to stop right there. Uh, businessman uh, Arnold H. Glasso, he says it like this, ideas not coupled with action never become bigger than the brain cells they occupied. Ideas, information, knowledge, if they are not attached to action, they never become bigger than the brain cells they occupied. Here's how scripture uh, um, says that faith without works is dead. John 13 and 17 says it like this. Now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. Right? And, and you know, I'm going to do a series maybe in a couple of years about uh, does the Bible really say that? Um, and one of the things people quote all the time that ain't nowhere in this book is uh, God helps those who help themselves. <laughs> That's not in the book, y'all. Right? That's not what it is. Here's what it is. When we do what we can do, we position ourselves to receive what God can do. When we do what we can do, we position ourselves to receive what only God can do. If this man does not inquire and investigate, he does not get the information necessary to encounter Jesus. And, and, and here's what scripture says. If you draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh to you. Sometimes God is saying, will you take that step of faith? Martin Luther King says it like this. Faith is taking the next step when you can't see the full uh, staircase. And some of you, because you can't see the full length mirror, my wife loves those full length mirrors, because you can't see the full picture, you're going to wait here in the limitations instead of seeking out the opportunity that God gives you to do what you can do. Some of us, the most practical thing we can do is take the next step in that idea that we have. I, you don't have all of it pieced together. My challenge to you is take the next right step. Take the next step and see the God opportunity in each and every situation. Here's the second thing, y'all. If we're going to see our obstacles as opportunities, we've got to recognize when we face obstacles, you have an opportunity to put your faith in Christ. You got an opportunity to put your faith in Christ. Something interesting is happening in the passage uh, today because this blind man has more sight and vision than all of these people who can see. This blind man can see something that they can't see. And friend, friends, I need you to understand this thing about faith is it helps you see what you can't see, what others can't see. Um, my daddy told me this story about this dad and his son, and this dad gave his son this old watch. He said to his son, this watch is about 200 years old, but I want you to take this and see how much it's worth. And so the son went to the watch store, and the watch guy said, I'll give you probably about 100 bucks for it. And then uh, he said, because it's a little old, but you know, it looked like it was nice in its day. And then he took it to the pawn shop, and the pawn shop said, well, it's got this crack in it. I'll give you 50 bucks. And then he took it to the museum, and the museum said, I'll give you $300,000. We've been looking for this artifact. We haven't seen one like this in years. And here's what the daddy told the son. It's just because somebody else can't see the value doesn't make the item any less valuable. And some of you need to understand that faith allows you to see the value in opportunities that other people can't see. I, I want you to look closely at the text, y'all, because everybody else, the crowd, everybody who could see Jesus, saw Jesus, said, this is Jesus of Nazareth. Nazareth, the place where nothing good can come out of. Nazareth, the other side of the tracks. But this blind man hears that and says, no, no, this is not Jesus from Nazareth. This is Jesus, son of David. That son of David is a messianic title. What he was saying is, y'all have misdiagnosed who this is. This is not just an ordinary individual. This is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. This is the lion of the tribe of Judah. This is the promise from the Father, and this is the answer to my question, the solution to my problem. He is what I need. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. 
You see, every time you face an obstacle, you have an opportunity to put your faith in Christ. And faith gives you the ability to see what other people can't see. This, this blind man sees what the other f- individuals in the text, they can't see. This whole crowd of people miss it. Whole crowd of people can't see what's happening. Here's what Hebrews 11 and 1 says. Now faith is the assurance, the substance, the Greek word, a cardion, of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. It helps you see what God is trying to show you before it ever becomes a reality in your life. It's a perspective shift. I'm not seeing the mountain. I'm seeing the mountain moved by my God. I'm, I'm not seeing the obstacle. I'm seeing the opportunity to see God in a way that I've never seen him before. And what it requires is it's not a denial of your reality. Okay? If you broke your foot, your foot is broken. Right? It's not a denial of your reality. Faith in Christ is a recognition of your need for him. It's a recognition of although I'm not where I want to be, I believe that Christ has the answer to where I need to be. That God is able to take me from where I am to where he desires for me to be. And this blind man begins to cry out for the mercy that he desires from the only one who can grant it. Here's the third thing, friends. The third obstacle that is really an opportunity. Every time you have an obstacle, you have an opportunity to persevere. (laughs) You got an opportunity to put one foot in front of the other and keep on going. Scripture tells us, don't get weary in well-doing. I need you to understand, friends, is that wherever there is faith, there will be opposition. Some of you, uh, and we used to teach this sometimes in Christendom in general, that if I face opposition, then I must be out of the will of God. Can I tell you that sometimes the opposition is the very indicator that you are going in the direction that God wants you to go, that wherever God is trying to lead you, the enemy is coming in opposition to what God wants to do in your life and in your world. Look, look at what happens. He notices and sees the opportunity for deliverance and he cries out and people tell him, be quiet. Stop talking so loud. Shh. shh. Get, get out of the way. They begin to speak death and negativity over his life and opportunity. They oppose what God ultimately wanted to do in his life. Friends, I I need you to understand that this is not a negative thing. In fact, Scripture says, the Lord will take what the enemy intended for evil and turn it around for your good. Here's what James 1, 2, and 3 says. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kind, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Y'all, the opposition did not come to discourage you. That was their intention. God uses it to develop you. He uses it to build your spiritual muscles because faith that is not tested is a faith that cannot be trusted. He he wants to build the faith necessary for you to endure and persevere in what he has called you to. Here's what Romans 5, 3, and 4 says. We can rejoice too. This is such an oxymoron. We can rejoice when we run into problems and trials. Anybody ever get excited when a problem happens? Like, yay, I got to buy four new tires because they blow out. Awesome. But here's why he says it. For we know that they help us in develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character and 
Character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. Let me translate that. All he's saying is that what these trials come to do is help make us into the people that God designed and desires for us to be. It cultivates up. It shapes us into who God wants us to be. So you have a decision to make. When you face this opposition, am I going to allow it to silence me or am I going to persevere? And here's the point. Obstacles and opposition are opportunities to amplify your faith. Here's my challenge to you. Double down. Go all in. That, that, that opportunity or that opposition is an opportunity to double down on your faith. I didn't say this in the first service, but um, when I moved to Atlanta the first time, I was 23 years old, I think. I was at a church. I was a youth pastor in Connecticut. I was with my mama. I was single, so you know, I never thought I was going to leave. I was there. She was cooking, doing everything for me. It was wonderful. And I felt the Lord say to me, prepare to leave and go to Atlanta and you will see my hand like you've never seen it before. I went into my pastor's office and I gave him my two weeks notice and I told my mama and she said, are you crazy? What are you doing? Why are you doing this? Where are you going to live? What are you going to do? My grandmother, she's probably watching right now. Mama, you remember this, right? She told me. How are you going to go there? What are you going to do for work? What are you going to do? I said, I'm not sure. I just know God said I need to go and I'm going to double down even though these voices and they said it out of good concern and it was probably the smart thing to do, but faith the word of the Lord to me saw the opportunity that God had for me that didn't look like what it was supposed to, but it allowed me to see what God was doing and I persevered and then the Lord hooked me up with the baddest woman in the world. He opened up a door of opportunity in multiple ways and if I did not say yes to that, I would have missed all of what God was trying to do. And hear me y'all, so many times we say, I'll just do that later. I'll do it the next time. And procrastination is the arrogance and the audacity to believe God will give you a second chance to do what you should have did the first time. Friends, the opportunity of a lifetime lasts the lifetime of the opportunity. You can't walk away in the midst of going through, persevere, and this what this man does in the text. They tell him to shut up, and he starts crying out louder and louder. I'm going to cry on Jesus until he hears me and answers me. I don't care if you are looking at me funny, and I pray to God, everybody in here watching online gets delivered from the opinions of people. You need to live for an audience of one. There is only one person who holds your future, and to hear him be the glory and the honor. Only one says, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Yes. Be free from that. He knew what he needed from God. And he didn't let the obstacles and the opposition stop him from moving forward. Now, I want to challenge you to persevere. But here's the fourth and final opportunity that we have in every obstacle. You have the opportunity to give God the glory. Notice what the text says, y'all. He comes to Jesus and he says, I want to see. And Jesus says, receive your sight. Your faith has made you whole. But Jesus uses an interesting word uh, for your faith has healed you, rather. He uses the Greek word sozo. And what that word means, it's actually not talking about physical healing but it's talking about salvation. Friends, so many of us are seeking what God can do for us with his hand. God, fix this financial issue, fix this burden, do this, do that. And Jesus is saying, if you put your faith in me, I'm not only going to do that, but my real work is what I'm going to do on the inside of you. You see, following Jesus is less about what he can do for you and what he wants to do in you. 
He wants to transform you from the inside out. See, this man thought he was just going to receive his sight, but he gets a new assignment. He goes from begging on the side of the city to following Jesus. He, he goes from begging on the side of the city, living day to day, to finding his eternal purpose in following the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But that's not it, y'all. He starts worshiping and praising God. You see, he didn't have spiritual amnesia in the moment, said, Woo, I can see now. I got what I wanted. I'm out. He remembers. And he begins to give thanks and praise to the one who did it. And y'all, as he begins to worship, everybody around him sees it and it becomes a praise party. L let me put it like this for you guys. You see, some of you are in battles right now. You're in trials. You're in storms. Some of you have been crying, dealing with challenges. You're saying, God, when is this going to work out? When is this going to come through? And I want to encourage you. This is not the end of your story. It will work out. But God's work in your life will draw one more to him. That, that, that's what it's all about. It is your story for his glory that he is going to allow your life to make a difference in the lives of others. That as he changes your world, it's going to help change somebody else's story. This blind man begins to worship and the crowd that just saw him as a regular guy begins to worship him as the Lord of Lords. Here's what Matthew 5, 14 and 16 says. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a stand and it gives light to all in the house in the same way let your light shine before others so they may see your good works and give glory to your father in heaven I need you to change your perspective folks it's not an obstacle it's an opportunity to see God it, it's not a limitation it's an opportunity to see God. It's not a barrier. It's an opportunity to see God at work in your life. And through the work in your life, he will be at work in the lives of others. He wants to do great things in your world. Today, we have a few opportunities. For some of you, the opportunity is to take the next right step. To stop letting the barriers of your past hold you back. To stop letting the lies of the past hold you back and to take the next right step. To put your faith in action. But there's others of you, you need to take that next opportunity. The opportunity to receive salvation from Jesus. Today is your day. Will you stand with me as we pray? And in a moment, our prayer partners will be down here and there here to pray with you, whatever you're struggling with, whatever obstacle is in your world. And today, we believe God will allow you to see the opportunity. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for your word that you have shared to encourage us to shift our perspective, to see things differently, to see things the way that you see them. God, would you give us the tenacity to persevere would you give us the boldness to take a step forward God would you give us the sight to see things that the way that you see them but ultimately God would you allow our lives to bring you glory that what we do would bring glory and honor to you God for the person who needs to accept the opportunity of the free gift of Jesus the grace found in him, I pray that today would be their day. And if that's you, I want you to pray this simple prayer with me. Lord Jesus, save me. Change me. Make me into the person that you want me to be. I receive your salvation today. Make me new. And Father, I just pray for your people and your children, God. I pray that they will see life through the eyes of faith, that you would, Lord, raise 
their, their, their faith, God, to another level, that they would see what you want them to see over the horizons, to see the opportunities, to see the open doors. And Father, I pray this week you would open new doors for them. This week they will see your hand of favor. This week you will prepare a table before them in the presence of their enemies. This week, God, they will get the good report. This week, God, their child will come home. This week, God, that you would bring it down to a zero balance. This week you would move in the lives of your people for your glory and your honor. In Jesus' name we pray and every heart say amen, amen, and amen.